On this episode of China Uncensored, what are the U.S. presidential candidates saying about China? China. 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 Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. You know, as a patriotic American, there's nothing I love more than watching the democratic process in action. And by democratic process, I mean this. The problem was it was to tear Jim, down. It was to Jim tear wants down. To be, he wants to be, to, to, he down, wants to be a tough guy. He wants to be a tough guy tonight. Tear down I didn't the take the property. The but there's one thing it seems the presidential candidates can all agree on. The biggest problem America has, the true threat that must be addressed, is China. China is waging cyber warfare against America. They're also trying to hack into everything that doesn't move in America. China is also a growing danger to our national security. But the trade agreement with China was an unmitigated disaster for American workers. China thinks we are truly the dumbest people on earth. Now, far be it from me to criticize anyone for criticizing China. In fact, I think all of you know why I criticize the Chinese regime. But for the leading five candidates, one of them will most likely be the U.S. president less than a year from now. So just how would each of them deal with China? For more, I'm joined by former political correspondent Matt Ganezda. Thanks, Chris. Now, Matt, you used to cover politics as a news reporter. I don't like to talk about that time in my life, Chris. I've seen things that cannot be unseen. I know it's under Donald Trump's hair. Do I want to know? Do you want to have nightmares for the next 10 years? Okay, never mind then. So these top five candidates, they've all been talking a lot about China, but which of them have actual experience dealing with China? Two of them do. Hillary Clinton has by far the most political experience with China. When she was first lady, she met a lot of Chinese officials. Then as Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton co-chaired the U.S.-China Strategic and Economic Dialogue. She also traveled to China twice during that time. Her second trip coincided with the blind Chinese activist Chen Guangcheng's escape from house arrest to the U.S. Embassy in 2012. Mm, those were exciting times. And the other? Donald Trump. He has no real political experience, but he's done lots of business with Chinese clients. He's had his products made there, and he sold properties to big-time Chinese investors. Does that count as China experience? He thinks it does. I love China. I sold an apartment for $55 million to a Chinese gentleman. Okay, let's get to the main issue. All of the candidates have talked about China taking American jobs. Would any of them actually do something about it? Look, Chris, convincing voters that you'll fix the U.S. economy is the best way to get elected. That's kind of cynical. That's kind of politics. It's true that millions of U.S. jobs have disappeared over the last 15 years since China joined the World Trade Organization with America's help. Those particular jobs, they're not coming back. So I think that if elected, all the candidates except one would support continued free trade with China, no matter what they say now as candidates. You said all the candidates except one. That's Bernie Sanders. As a U.S. congressman and later senator, he'd actually opposed pretty much every trade deal with China, starting with Bill Clinton's original push to get China into the WTO. So maybe Sanders as president would actually try to pull back. The problem is, even if he wanted to, it's unclear that he'd really have that power since the president needs the support of Congress. What about human rights? Well, Chris, as you of all people know, it's easy to criticize the Chinese government for its human rights abuses. It's hard to actually do something about it. Are we still talking about the candidates? Oh, sure. So, Ted Cruz. He's been outspoken against forced abortions in China, mainly because he opposes abortion. Hillary Clinton has been outspoken against forced abortions in China, mainly because she supports a woman's right to choose. Marco Rubio has called for the release of political prisoners and to block U.S. visas for Chinese officials who violated human rights. And Bernie Sanders has probably been the boldest. Well, in the House of Representatives, Sanders actually co-sponsored resolutions about Chinese human rights, including HCR 68, a resolution that specifically condemned the persecution of Falun Gong. What about Donald Trump? Oh, Trump hasn't said anything about China's human rights. In a way, he kind of agrees with China. What? Well, China's position on human rights is to actually change the definition of human rights to include allowing people to make money as a human right. And Donald Trump supports making money. So the Chinese leaders must like Trump. 
You'd think so, but actually no. My favorite state-run media, Global Times, recently published an editorial that was very anti-Trump. Chinese leaders think Trump lacks the nuance and diplomacy to have a good relationship. Like that tweet where he said the concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive. Yeah, that's just not a widely accepted view. So which candidate would serve America best when it comes to China? None of them. None of them? Let me put this in context, Chris. Back in 1992, a young, passionate Bill Clinton took a tough stance against China. In his first presidential campaign, he criticized George Bush Sr. for coddling dictators, or as Clinton called them, the butchers of Beijing because of the Tiananmen massacre. We need to be a force for freedom and democracy, and we need to use our unique position to support freedom, whether it's in Haiti or in China or in any other place. But then, by the end of his second term, Clinton just wanted to do business with China. I don't believe it's right to crack down on people for their religious views or their political expression or because they want to be in an association like the Falun Gong. I don't think that's right. But I don't believe that we will have more influence on China by giving them the back of our hand. I guess that explains why Clinton offered the palm of his hand to Jiang Zemin, the man who just authorized the mass murder of the Falun Gong. Exactly. So Bill Clinton ended up coddling his own dictators. But, you know, that's because Bill Clinton was a Democrat. And Democrats are known to be hypocrites. So then presidential candidate George W. Bush comes along, and he has a tough stance against China. In a 1999 interview on CNN, He said that Clinton, quote, made a mistake in calling China a strategic partner. Bush argued that we need to view China as a competitor, not a partner. And then he went on to treat China as a responsible stakeholder instead. Well, at least when it came to Jiang Zemin, the dictator who killed huge numbers of his own citizens, Bush maintained a dignified distance, right? Yeah, but, you know, that's because George Bush was a Republican. And Republicans are known to be hypocrites. So you're saying... I'm saying don't rely on the next U.S. president, whoever he or she may be. Because once you become president, campaign rhetoric goes out the window. Thanks, Matt, I guess. The pleasure was all mine. So what do you think the next U.S. president should do about China? Leave your comments below. And if you like China Uncensored, please support us on Patreon. Because after this episode, I don't think we're going to get much funding from the CIA. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Here's a unique training method. Surely it's a good idea to play a game of hot potato with a live grenade. When Western companies first went to China, it was like, does this guy know how to party or what? But now, this party's over.